7 by 7 which is a lifestyle magazine, and every year they come out with two lists. One is The Big Eat, it's 100 Things You Must Eat in San Francisco, and The Big Drink, which is 50 Drinks You Must Drink in San Francisco. So what I did is I created two blogs, respectively, The Big Eat and The Big Drink, with the intent of eating and drinking my way through these lists. So I romped around the city uh, taking photos and scribbling notes which would turn into blog posts and I would share it on social media. And I did this because I thought it would be super fun in my free time to eat and drink through these lists. And it was a way to test if I could self-impose deadlines and manage, um, keep up with creating content while managing my school load. Because of course, I would need to be able to do this if I decided to pursue writing the cookbook of, the, of a workload plus, plus cookbook. And I wanted to hone in on my food writing voice. So these two blogs were the perfect platform in which I could dabble and practice uh, food writing. So it took about a year to eat and drink through both these lists. <laughs> it was a hard job, but someone had to do it. And um, with this accomplishment under my belt, I felt confident that I could tackle a cookbook. And so upon further research, I decided that I wanted to self-publish because I wanted creative control over the end product. Um, I had a strong creative vision and I wasn't willing to forfeit that creative vision by going through a traditional publishing house. And um, the only hurdle in doing so is that I had zero experience in any creative skill set that I was about to embark on. So what I mean by that is when it came to cooking, I had no formal culinary training. When it came to writing, I had never been professionally published. I just had my blogs. When it came to photography, I wasn't familiar with most of the settings on my camera. <laughs> and when it came to design, I didn't know how to use a single Adobe program. <laughs> didn't own one, didn't ever know how to use it. <laughs> but, and this is the big one, what I lacked in experience, I made up for in enthusiasm. So I have this thirst of knowledge, and I really want to teach myself all these creative skills. So I did just that. Over the next couple of years, I started teaching myself everything. So with cooking, I expanded my ever-growing collection of cookbooks and started recipe testing. Um, for food writing, I became part of the editorial team of Edible Slow, our local food publication that comes out every quarter. And um, I just devoured books on food photography and food photography blogs. And with design, I enrolled in Blog Shop. It was a two-day intensive Photoshop boot camp. I invested in a big Mac computer, desktop, large screen, and I took Skillshare classes online. So everything from book cover design to email marketing to product development, you name it, I took a class on it. And so, once I was far enough along in the project, I decided to let the public know so that they could help me fund the first print run through pre-order sales. So tonight, I'd like to share with you that campaign video that went live, um, can you help me out? Can you yeah. <laughs> that went live over the summer. So summer 2015, this is the Kickstarter campaign that came out. My name is Kendra Aronson. I'm the writer, photographer, designer, and self-publisher of the San Luis Obispo Farmer's Market Cookbook, simple seasonal recipes, and short stories from the central coast of California. I've been hustling on this personal passion project for over two years, interviewing, writing, visiting farms, recipe testing, food styling, coordinating photo shoots, designing. I'm so excited to share the fruits of my labor with you today. My cookbook features 196 pages of 60 seasonal recipes and 40 short stories. 
The recipes are organized by seasons and are subdivided into five categories. Breakfast, light bites, lunch, dinner, and dessert. In the spirit of creating a collaborative, community-driven cookbook, the majority of the recipes have been contributed by the farmers, the food artisans, and the farm-to-table chefs of Slow County. The latter part of the cookbook features short stories, interviews, and profiles of these fine folks, all of whom played a significant role in the cookbook, and all of whom I love very dearly. Examples of recipes include Santa Maria-style barbecue, cherry pie, warm buttered oysters over young greens, roasted beet and blue cheese salad, olive oil cake, strawberry pancakes, butternut squash and green apple soup, milk braised pork, shrimp spring rolls, kale chicken Caesar salad, goat cheese cheesecake, mushroom and leaf quiche, gnocchi al pomodoro, pumpkin waffles, steak with avocado chimichurri, and so much more. These recipes are absolutely incredible, and I want to share them with you. Now I need your help to make this cookbook a tangible reality. As a young self-publisher, the upfront printing costs are quite expensive. So I'm rallying you, my fellow foodies and farmers market goers, to help me crowdfund the printing costs of this cookbook. I'm asking for $12,000 to move forward with this project. For those who are unfamiliar with Kickstarter, it is an all or nothing funding platform. Therefore, I need to raise 100% of my financial goal by August 22nd, or this project is not funded at all. If you like the project, you can pledge money to make it happen. And in return for your financial backing, you'll receive some pretty awesome rewards. A $5 pledge will get you a handwritten thank you card. A $15 pledge will get you a market tote bag highlighting the days, times, and locations of the 20 weekly farmers markets throughout Slow County. A $35 pledge will get you a copy of the cookbook. And a $40 pledge will get you a fancy signed copy of the cookbook. <laughs> Other rewards include a copy of the cookbook and market tote bag. A copy of the cookbook, market tote bag, and market map. Multiple copies, a seasonal dinner feast cooked by yours truly, and even having your name printed in the cookbook as a benefactor. If all goes to plan, I anticipate having the book in my hands and yours this holiday season. I embarked on this creative journey to create a community keepsake that will inspire folks to shake hands with our slow farmers, to cook simple recipes with the season's bounty, and to support restaurants that promote the farm to table mission. I hope you will be part of this journey with me by pledging your support today. How much you raised on Kickstarter? Yes, I raised uh, $26,000. <laughs> it was overwhelmingly successful. I'm, I'm still pinching myself that that happened. And the day that the cookbooks arrived was one of the happiest days of my life because I couldn't believe that an idea I had in my head in 2010 was now a tangible reality in 2015. And on top of that, after working so hard for so many years, I ended up selling out my entire inventory of 2,000 copies in just 20 days. So that was which is so exciting, it'll be here mid to late March of this year. And so I'd like to leave you with a quote tonight from a fellow cookbook author, uh, Julia Child. And she says, find something you're passionate about and keep tremendously interested in it. So if you're out there and you have an idea or a, a business or a project and it's really tugging at you, go for it. Honor that creative calling. Don't let lack of experience hold you back. I didn't know anything I was doing when I started this, and I still did it. So if I can do it, you can do it. And people will sense your passion, and it will propel you to make it happen. So thank you so much.